You guys, oh my God, tonight's Real Housewives of Beverly Hills season finale really broke my heart. I'm not gonna lie, it took an extra 30 minutes to kind of like digest it because the truth is, is that I remember Portia as a little girl and I, she was such a sweet little girl and oh, seeing her cry tonight really got to me. Based on all the signals of tonight's show, it's obvious as it has been, I've been saying that Kyle caught Mauricio in some sort of way. And she really kind of confirms that in the final scene of tonight's show. Um, you know, even though she was saying that wasn't the case, I think she doesn't trust him for some reason. And um, I just, it breaks my heart because I know Kyle wouldn't have wanted to end that marriage for any reason, unless she just couldn't get over what happened. And that's heartbreaking. When someone forces you into a corner like that and forces you to have to make a dramatic move because of their actions, it's just so unfortunate and very disappointing. So anyway, I am going to do my recap, but I did get really emotional tonight because I just felt so bad for the whole family and the girls. It's tough. Mauricio had no expression in that scene. It was like nothing. So weird. This was a tough show this week for her, for sure. No, I know some of you are going to be like, she always wants to be the victim and call her vile Kyle and all this stuff. But Kyle was nice. And this is tough, knowing how important her family was to her. That's all I'm going to say on that. But feel free to comment because you know I don't censor. Now, a lot of people are going to say they don't know why Mauricio and Kyle broke up, but the answer was in the episode tonight, and it is at the end of this video, so please wait till the end. <laughs> I'm going to show you. So tonight's show reminds you, probably better to just not have a guy in your life, honestly. Like, frankly, we've got PK, who doesn't ever want to come home or doesn't act like he does. Dorit's alone. You've got Kyle being forced into a situation where she's separating from her husband and her family as she knows it is destroyed. We've got Sutton who's gotten away from her wealthy man and finally feels a taste of freedom and it's like she's been starving to death is the feeling that you get from her reaction. And then we have Erica who based on her perception has been completely uh, nuked by her ex-husband due to his Ponzi scheme and fraud. And that leaves us with just Crystal Minkoff and Anne-Marie Wiley. Anne-Marie Wiley's husband hasn't had a great year. And Crystal Minkoff and Rob, well, they're the only ones we have left, really. And uh, the only hope that maybe a relationship could work out at this point. I'm also kind of down because I just did a deep dive of Larsa Pippen, and it's a lot grittier than I expected. Anyway, that's for uh, Sunday. Does anyone ever have a happy ending that they don't write themselves? So on the finale, we start out with Kyle's white party. Kevin Lee is there from 2012 Lisa Vanderpump days. And Kyle Richards drags Lisa Vanderpump, just like she used to do, behind Lisa's back on camera tonight, which was awesome. I, the patrons know I've told them that Kyle used to say that Lisa Vanderpump would say, let's start that scene again and made it all about her and always wanted to make herself look perfect on camera. And she used to say that and really resent that behind the scenes. Well, she proved all of my gossip in tonight's show by doing it for the camera. And I was grateful for that. Uh, anyway, we're at Sophie Stadium. I don't know why I thought that was in Miami, but it's in Los Angeles. And uh, so she's getting ready for this lavish white party. And it's really funny because Kevin Lee uh, puts Kyle's name across the white party floor, trying to like honor her because he was used to people like Lisa Vanderpump, I guess, that wanted to be the center of attention. And so he tries to do the same thing for Kyle. And she's like, I. I'm embarrassed, like, I don't want my name on the party. <laughs> and I was dying, because payback's a bitch, Kyle, payback's a bitch. Okay. Here is an image of the white party. Notice that it's in Inglewood, California. Wow, Inglewood? 
Now, Kyle Richards did her Super Bowl ad at Sophie Stadium, and there's no doubt in my mind that Sophie Stadium gave them the stadium usage for free in return for promoting it on Bravo's website and all this, but they said that the price of the party was $400,000. Martin, uh, we go to Martin's jewelry store, and Sutton's there with her daughter, Porter, who, by the way, is so well-mannered and so lovely, and I could only dream that my son would end up with a girl that respectable in the way that she handled herself in the scene, just lovely. And she obviously cares a great deal for her mother. She was saying, mom, I hope to buy you $68,000 earrings one day. And she said, I'm going to be independent. And even though I'm going to get married and have babies, I'm going to be independent. And this was off of Sutton's advice. They seemed very in sync. And Sutton buys herself a $68,000 sapphire earrings. Here's a picture of Sutton with her daughter. She's wearing the earrings that she buys for $68,000. I'll try to zoom in. Which shows how rich Sutton is. I mean, really, truly, like, damn. <laughs> I'm sure she got a discount on the DL, but wow. Really impressive purchase. <laughs> Take it from me. Did you know? Never gets old. So then we see PK and Dorit talking. And PK is like talking to her about, I've got to be in London, be in London. And she's like, I wish you would come home. You haven't been here for Mother's Day. You haven't been here for the show. You haven't been here for anything. And you had the white party on your calendar and now you're not here for this. And he's like, I know, but I got to work. And if you guys weren't going into the season after all my videos feeling sus about PK, I would be surprised. But after this season, if you're not going, why is PK fine with being months at a time in London without his wife? You've got to go. Something stinks. Just saying. And I mean, I, I feel bad for Dorit because I think Dorit's holding on to an idea of her life versus her actual marriage because how can they even be close if they never see each other? Just saying. I mean, that's just a fact. And I know the love is deep with PK and Dorit, but it's just got disaster written all over it. So then we uh, go and we're at the white party. Mauricio waltzes in alone. He's disconnected from the party. He doesn't know where Kyle is. They're really operating on this like individuals at the party. He's really hanging back. Then the producer's like, Mauricio, Kyle's here. And he like runs over at the producer's request, not because of his own request. And then he greets Kyle and her family and they look epic and beautiful and it's really great. But there just is no connection between... Mauricio and Kyle anymore, which is so apparent. And he's really checked out. Like he is just very flatlined every time they're on he's on the show now. By the way, shout out to Ferris White Mary Janes. I mean, so hot. Jeff Lewis surprises us at the party with Cynthia Bailey. Jeff Lewis gets yelled at by Kyle because he said she was on Ozempic on his podcast. And she said, you need to fix that. You know I'm not on Ozempic. And he said, I fixed it this morning. And then he was like nervous and he dropped his drink. It was so not Jeff Lewis. <laughs> it was like, who was that guy? That wasn't Jeff Lewis. I don't know. He left his balls at the door somewhere. Um, but anyway, <laughs> Kyle scared him. <laughs> so I'm not sure what happened to Kyle's white party, but it morphed into something it never has been. Just saying. And Erica Jane Girardi takes to the stage in her costume after literally ripping off Madonna. So Erica literally rips off a whole scene from Madonna's movie Truth or Dare, where she's praying with her dancers. And Erica is so trying to mimic this scene in the show tonight that I was dying, okay? I was like, oh my God, Madonna's going to be so pissed if she sees this. By the way, Madonna's uh, actually the originator in a lot of ways of reality TV with this actual movie, Truth or Dare. And then you can see that Erica's been caught doing this in the past. This was uh, Latrim saying they ripped off their hit song and never paid a penny for it. Uh, then she ripped off music from Amber using a song without permission. So obviously this is a thing with Erica. A theme. And then she went on the stage and the girls seemed to think that she was lip syncing 
her song Expensive to Be Me and then just dancing really well to it and doing a split. She really can jump into that split anytime she wants. Um, expensive to be me. <laughs> uh, well, I'll tell you what, that was definitely gonna be read as an F you to the victim. So I'm going to clap back for them. Watch We're this. We're former Girardi Keys clients. Of course, Erica Jane was assigned our attorney fees. We're former Girardi Keys clients. Of course we watch Beverly Hills Housewives to see how Erica spends our money. We're former Girardi Keys clients. Of course we have proof, receipts, timelines, screenshots, fucking everything to prove that Girardi is a fucking thief. So then we see Denise Richards and Dorit talking at the party. Dorit seems to be by herself at the party a lot. Kyle is not really talking to her that much and she's giving her the cold shoulder. And the other women do not want to talk to Dorit that much. So she's sort of alone. It's really bizarre. Um, you know, she's like standing next to Kyle. The Actually, the only person who talks to her really is Mauricio. I don't know why this filter reminds me of Denise Richards, but it does. So Dorit also criticizes Denise's outfit again because she's wearing pink to a white party. But I liked her outfit. It was like a shout out to sort of Camp 90210 days in the 80s. Remember that? Camp Beverly Hills, the fashion line. Camille Grammer Meyer is also at the party. She doesn't really do anything, but Kyle gives her a shout out from stage like, oh, hi, Camille, I didn't see you. Like to give her, you know, acknowledge her, which was nice. Although Camille was probably like, okay, <laughs> maybe just come say hi next time. And secret life of the party, Faye Resnick came. By the way, Faye is super fun to party with. So she came. I was like, okay, the party's going to be all right now. <laughs> so let me play you the buying Beverly Hills uh, sequence with Mauricio talking about the divorce with the kids. I had an amazing 26 years with your mom, an amazing 26 years. I wanted to do everything possible to just save it. So, you know, your mom uh, came and she talked to me um, and she said, I think I need space. Um, she said to me, listen, the rules are that, you know, you go out, you date, you do whatever it is that you want to do. Like, I'm not going to be asking you what you're doing. I don't want you to be asking me what I'm doing. Like, we are separated. This is new terrain. Yeah. Look. I need to have, you know, some time and some kind of clear head and maybe I'll go spend a month in Aspen. <sighs> so weird even having these conversations. I know. Mm -hmm. I mean, our life has just changed so much. Definitely could not have predicted where my life was going to be one year ago in all aspects. Like, we only even found out that there was any issues like just a few months ago and now it just is like things have changed so quickly <sighs> i'm sorry that we're all going through this me too sorry for all of us i'm sorry for you guys i'm sorry for you for all of us yeah but notice how he makes it kyle who broke it off did you hear that and like, it's like he tried to save the marriage, but Kyle broke it off. When asked what happened by a producer, which was Alex Baskin, Kyle responded, there were things that happened that made me lose my trust and I wasn't able to recover from. I just want to be at peace wherever I'm at because I haven't really had that. Am I done? It's over. And then she really did begin to cry for real, like not fake Kyle tears, like for real. And this was a, I mean, it was like, wow, scene. Now, Alex Baskin is Kyle's boss, but also her friend. They've been working together for 13 years. I think the dynamic of having Alex ask her really got into her psyche, and she finally gave us the tea. That's from knowing my behind the scenes stuff. That's my insight I can give you. And then they show a scene where Garcelle and Sutton are talking about how they think Kyle lied the entire season, uh, downplaying how bad the relationship really was on camera. And they say that they believe she lied the whole season. And the producers show it, so they obviously are, believe it too. 
No, all kidding aside, I love to drag everybody too. You know it's my thing. I enjoy it. But there's a few people on the show that I know have really good hearts deep down. One is Kyle. Two is somebody I'm not going to tell you yet, but soon I will tell so you. So here are the season wrap-ups in under a minute. Dorit and PK, their marriage might not make it and he's still not home. Anne-Marie is not going to comment on people's health issues at cocktail parties. Garcelle is going to just continue to parent as best as she can. And she won an award for her human trafficking movie. Oh, Sutton Strack is excited about her freedom and she's going to continue to love her horse, Santos, because that guy she was dating, Steve, ghosted her for two days and she's not going to settle for him. And... Crystal Minkoff is letting her brother go, finally, and took Rob's advice. And Erica is having a successful concert, even though the tickets were for sale for $7. It's her redemption tour. Like, subscribe, and hit that notification button.